that's the big discovery, actually. It was made about uh, 10 years ago, I suppose, that when people's minds are supposedly blank, when they're not doing anything, the brain is actually very active. So it's active through large regions, moreover. When you're focused on a task, brain activity is also focused in specific regions. But when our minds are wandering, there's a, a, a broad network that's active in the brain. It's called the default mode network. It's the network that's sort of there all the time and gets focused down when we're, when we're doing particular tasks. But we're not, when we're not focused, it's, it covers large regions. And I think it sort of gets into, into our memories, into different sense modalities and the like. So it's extracting information from a wide region of the brain in a fairly random fashion. One part of the brain that's very important is a structure called the hippocampus, which is kind of in, almost in the centre of the brain. It's the underlying part of the temporal lobe. So if you kind of dig in behind your ear, you'll uh, discover this uh, seahorse-shaped structure that's called the hippocampus. And that's kind of the hub, if you like, of mind wandering. Certainly the hub of wandering in time. So people who've had the hippocampus destroyed for one reason or another, uh, effectively lose the capacity to what we've called mental time travel. That is, uh, imagine past events or imagine future ones. Uh, it's only the hub of the system because, uh, as um, I've already said, mind wandering, of course, occupies large regions of the brain, but it seems to be the hippocampus that, that kind of pulls it together. Uh, there are several unfortunate cases of people who've had surgery or who have had... Uh, brain injury, who've kind of uh, lost the capacity to imagine the past or imagine the future. So the hippocampus is the sort of grand central station, if you like, of the brain that uh, focuses our abilities to, to um, wander, wander mentally in time and space. I think there are sort of two drivers of the sort of uh, uh, scattered information in the brain. One turns out to be um, from the brain stem. And that's the, that's the center, if you like, of dreaming. So activity in the brain during dreaming is driven from the brain stem. And that's why I think it's sort of uh, semi-incoherent. So the, the, um, it, it kind of feeds upwards through the hippocampus and into the regions of the brain in a fairly random fashion. It, of course, depends to some extent on memories and stuff that's stored in the brain, but it's kind of jumbled. So that's uh, one source, I think, which actually, strangely, comes from the brainstem, so it's ancient. But then, for more controlled mind-wandering, I think the frontal lobes, the frontal lobes of our brains, are concerned with planning, uh, sequencing, and those sorts of things. So to the extent that, to which we can control our, our mind-wanderings, it's partly through the, it's through the frontal lobes, really. And I think mind-wandering is a combination of both. One extreme being dreaming, where it's just a jumble. The other being a really careful frontal lobe induced, uh, deliberate strategy of exploring different regions of your past or of your knowledge.